Hello and welcome to a very important edition of the Immigrant Magazine Weekly. It's a very important topic that I hope you will spend time with me and my guests to pay attention. I recently watched a very well-produced documentary about HIV and AIDS and the stigma surrounding it, particularly in Africa. It was shocking to see that despite all the medical advances today, HIV and AIDS is still a death sentence in some parts of the world. However, one man is on a mission to change that. In his directorial debut, director Tyler Rosen and executive producer Jake Glazer have created this documentary, which is the story of acclaimed Danish musician Thomas Bottichon, who was born HIV positive, and his crusade to use his music to wipe out AIDS in his native Zambia and beyond. Before we I welcome the guest, I'd like for you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet, to like us so that YouTube will share our videos and also ring the notification bell so you will be notified when we have these kinds of important stories to bring to you. So, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Director Tyler Q. Rosen and Executive Producer Jake Glazer. So I really want to welcome Jake Glazer to the show and Tyler Rosen. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me this day to talk about this very important subject matter. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Thanks for having us. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't be better. Thanks for having us. And yeah, it is an incredibly important topic and it's very timely for the world right now. Absolutely. You know, there's more than one pandemic. There's a current pandemic going on, but this particular pandemic has been going on for a long time. And I think people have almost forgotten, especially in the West, that, you know, in many parts of the world, it is still a death sentence. You know, it's as yeah. I have lost family members. Mm -hmm. HIV and AIDS. I have an aunt who lost maybe four children to HIV and AIDS. And it was a shame. And the stigma, I believe, like your documentary portrays, is really the killer in it. So I really want to start. Let me start with Tyler. Um, Tyler, how did you meet Tom Thomas and how did you decide to do this project? Uh, it was very serendipitous. Thomas and I actually met on a small island in Indonesia, mm -hmm. oddly enough. And, uh, you know, I say serendipitous because Thomas had just been outed in the press in Denmark. Mm -hmm. So it almost felt like we were, I don't want to say it, but it was like we, we were meant to meet. And then it, it became this thing because he was at that point in his life where he was reassessing and reevaluating everything. And he was writing songs, but the film didn't actually start until about three or four years later when he invited me to go shoot some stuff with him down Zambia. Wow. So now we're talking about his, what he's doing in Africa and his native Zambia, where he was born, right? And mm -hmm. you're talking about having been outed in Denmark. Is this stigma also in Europe, you know, just as much as it is in Africa? Why was it an outing? He was not ready to come out, I guess. He didn't want that story out at that time. And I think uh, Jake would be able to speak even more to that, but stigma is heavy everywhere. Certainly not as much as in Zambia. I mm -hmm. think Denmark is one of the most progressive cultures on the planet, and it's still there. Right. So he, Thomas has stories, sure, yeah. So how were you able to put this story together to make it, to bring it into, to, how did you decide to make a documentary and how were you able to put it together and bring all the pieces and everybody? Uh, it just started first with the footage and actually documenting natural moments and, and, and trying to capture that emotion, that raw emotion, because, you know, Thomas, his song started pouring out of him. Okay. And that became apparent that that would be the backbone of the story. This man with his songs and his music trying to make a difference. So it all started with that. And then from there, we worked to dig into the backstory and kind of capture that part of the story. That, would, that was the hardest part really is the stuff that I hadn't shot. We, we were fortunate we had a lot of photographs from his father and from his past and we were able to piece it together but it all starts with the music well 
did you so did it, what surprised you the most about the the journey in terms of the emotions and finding out you know how much lit Africa is or was as far as you know the advancements in medicine and all right. of that were you surprised uh yeah I was surprised at the denial mm -hmm. it was uh it was heavy and I was shocked at how prevalent you know I think there's official stats maybe it's 13 14 percent infection rate in Zambia but that's not what our friends tell us they say it's much higher especially out in the tribal areas and in the, in the, the areas where it's harder to get to, especially information. I think, you know, in some cases it's higher. It's more, more like 18, who knows? I'm not, I'm not a public health official, but it is rampant. You know, we have our friends, the other musicians who are featured in the film tell me people are dying every other day from AIDS, but nobody is saying at the funeral, our brother, or sister died of AIDS, they're saying they died of liver complications or kidney failure, stuff like that. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, I'm just, I'm, I, I, when I watched the documentary myself, I was shocked. I mean, I'm from Africa and I know, but sometimes you get desensitized. So what is, what was your ultimate goal as a director? What is the message that you're trying to put out there as a director? Oh, know your status, know your status get tested and confront the problem head on. Absolutely. And support Thomas, support Thomas and his message. And from a creative standpoint, I try to make a really cool rock doc. I wanted to capture really raw moments because Jake and I talk about this all the time. It's, uh, it's about how can we break through that, that wall, that stigmatized health, uh, stale, boring wall to get to the youth and I saw very clearly it's through Thomas's music for sure mm -hmm. so I was trying to craft uh, you know something that's cool where you want to watch it oh this is really cool yes because typically if you just did a documentary it's just telling stories somebody reading right. you know voiceover nobody's interested in that as much as the topic is one that's important. So I really applaud you for weaving in the music and the entertainment because it's a, is it a one hour documentary? It's quite long. Is it a one yeah, hour? It's pretty length. It's about an hour 17. Yeah. 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 So well, you did a good job. So I, Jake, let me defer to you for a bit. How did you get involved? My goodness. Um, what was it, Tyler? I think maybe <clears throat> four and four years ago, four and a half years ago. Um, Tyler and Thomas both reached out to me and I was living uh, here in Venice Beach, California. And, um, you know, they they had come across my my name and some of my work. And uh, when they reached out and, and told me about, you know, this this baby of an idea that they had, you know, I, I, I turned around and, and I said, you know what, this is really striking a chord for me because at the time in my life, uh, with the work that I do with my family's organization, which is the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation, we focus primarily on care and treatment, um, on programmatic support. And so we have, um, you know, over 5,000 sites around, across Africa. And we're providing testing opportunities, care and treatment, um, psychosocial support. And so the foundation, or I should say the, the infrastructure to be able to support these communities needs to grow, but a lot of it is there. And so when I heard this idea, I said, you know what? There's something special here because we need to identify new vehicles right. to push younger generations through that threshold to get tested and know their status to what Tyler was saying, you know, even with this parallel pandemic we're facing now with COVID testing is really what needs to take place. If we want to know the status of communities, whatever the health issue might be, mm -hmm. we need testing and we need to be able to know their status so that they can take the proper action to be safe and protect themselves and their family and their, their relationships. And so that's been such a big a uh, hurdle for us to overcome in HIV and AIDS is we've spent a lot of time focusing on mothers and children, and we've discovered how to stop the transmission from mother to baby. And during the process of this, in the incredible work that so many organizations and individuals around the world have done, 
we have to take ownership over the fact that we have forgotten about younger generations that are growing up into their teens. And these adolescents that are born HIV negative aren't receiving the education, the awareness, and the empowerment to be able to keep themselves HIV negative. And if they do happen to contract the virus, how do they get into the right services necessary so that they can live a long, healthy life? I'm HIV positive, I'm 36 years old. I'm strong, I'm successful. I have an amazing woman in my life, an incredible relationship. She's HIV negative. We can have a family, we can have HIV negative children. And these realities where if you take medication, you will achieve an undetectable viral load, which means that your, your virus will be untransmittable is a massive piece of information. And I think one of the real golden moments in this project that Tyler and Thomas really kicked off are these epiphany moments where yeah. Thomas is talking to young people in Zambia about some of these facts mm -hmm. that are readily available to the world, right. yet this is new information to them. And we're sitting here reflecting saying, okay, it's good information because we're obviously needing to evolve how we educate and what that vehicle looks like. And then I heard Thomas's music and I said, just like Tyler did, I said, this is the backbone and this is gonna be the opportunity to send that message. And what cooler of a person to do that than Thomas? I mean, you look at the kid and you're just not kid, he's my age, you look at my peer yes. and you say, holy mackerel, like this guy's rad. I mean, look at his hairdo, listen to his music, look at his kids, look at his lifestyle. You know what else I love about him is that, you know, he's black, he's white, he's mm -hmm. African, he's European. Yeah, he, he really crosses a lot of boundaries. Yeah. 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 So Jake, you, I mean, you just said it. So you are a living example of someone that's, did I get you right, HIV positive and living mm -hmm. a full life. Yeah. Just and like it's you know, and, and the, the effort and the opportunity that took place through the making of this documentary and the opportunity to share it with the world yes. is a chance to help normalize and destigmatize HIV. Right. It's not until, and it's not like, this is what I always try to explain to people. It's not just youth in Africa. Yeah. It's also right here in our backyard in Los Angeles. It's mm -hmm. also in our backyard across the entire United States and the world young generations just aren't being educated in the right way. And until they are shown that new path, they don't know how to redirect from where they are in their life. So Jake, let me ask you this. What did you experience working in Africa? It looks like you've been doing this for a while. What did you experience in Africa are the, are the misconceptions that make this so difficult to overcome and to get the message across? I mean, Number one, access to treatment is, is, is the biggest issue, in my opinion, just because we're looking at a real opportunity to impact every community that confronts HIV and AIDS with the services necessary for them to be healthy, to not pass on the virus, and to have a, a successful, and, and I don't like saying the word normal, but you know, a, a rather, uh, a life not dictated by HIV. Yes. Um, and that's growing exponentially. And so I look at it and I say, I've always said, okay, the, the care and treatment and the foundation, like I said, is there, but how is it speaking to this generation? And that's really where I think the, kind of the new perspective from this documentary and what we're doing from our angle with our generation is packaging the idea of caring for yourself in a way that is attractive to that generation. You know, I always tell people, I say, okay, so we're going around and we're saying, get tested. Mm -hmm. So my favorite way to, to, to kind of encapsulate the, the stigma around this, I don't care if you're going into school to take a test or if you're going to a doctor to take a test. At the end of the day, that word is stigmatized. Yeah, period. It is period. Because you're either going to pass or fail and you don't know. And so it's, the, the actual language, the look and feel of it has to change. And that's really what Tyler and Thomas were able to execute so perfectly in this documentary is everything from the way they marketed it within the community to being boots on the ground and walking from door to door and spreading this message and showing this experience of, of unity and camaraderie that we all took the same action to live a better life and to, and to be healthy. And in that process, we find opportunity to educate youth 
by even showing them our pills. Right. I mean, my pills are, I take two pills every day that are smaller than an aspirin. And every single pro athlete that I look up to in my life takes 10 times that of multivitamins and supplements to live their best self. So even taking pills is stigmatized and it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Yeah. Well, with in the documentary, it does, you know, it's revealed that the government has these medicines and it's available. So what is the problem? What's the, what is the disconnect between the government, um, big organizations and getting the medications to who needs to have these medications? What's well, going I think, on? yeah, I think, I think a very big part of it is for a long time, private sector have been amazing sponsors and amazing support opportunities for nonprofits. But we're now moving into an age where we, through this ex experience of doing my drugs, we see a, a, an opportunity for a, a branded lifestyle experience to take part in the nonprofit space. And right. so I think on one hand, it's the communication. How are we packaging and selling this product? And who are we strategically aligning with in that private sector space? So I spent a lot of time in Tanzania and all of my friends in Tanzania, it's Manchester United, it's Nike, it's Converse, and it's Vans. And that's what they're wearing on their body. And so these brands should be taking an active role in making the environment that their consumers participate in to live a healthy life an attractive one. Absolutely. And so that's where this- It has this, to be cool. It has to be cool. It has to be cool. That's and that's what, what, that, and that's what this project cool. is. Yeah. We may, this is a, a little, we, we cracked the door for everyone to take a look at the opportunity to say, we can make this look cool. And if we can, and if we make it look cool and we sell it right, we right. can push massive amounts of population of youth to know their status, to do it together, to do it together as one whole community, global community, and then do as the doctors tell them to be healthy, just like I do. And I do what they say, and my life is absolutely beautiful. That's yeah. right. I like and you were mentioning a role model, having a role model like a super peer, mm -hmm. uh, 100%. showing them. And I think, you know, Thomas can become this beacon of hope, this beacon of positivity, because he's done it just like Jake's done it. But Thomas is a Zambian. Yes, he is. And that's what I was going to ask. What is the impact that you think someone like Thomas? you know, being out there and being a face, especially for the continent of Africa, what impact do you think that would have, you know, if we had more people coming out, you know, like Thomas? Sure. I mean, the, uh, like I was saying to you earlier that I've worked very hard through my career, finding creative ways to connect with African youth, fully understanding that I'm a white male from Venice Beach, California, that's lived a, a privileged life. And yeah. that's very different. So how do you relate? And, and it, took a, it took a long time to crack that code. And, it has, and for me, it has nothing to do with HIV. It's just connecting with my peers as peers. We like the same things. We like music, we like art, we like culture, we like sports, we like all those things. And so that's a great avenue to have discovered. But Thomas, to have a role model who is from your country, who looks like you, yeah. who speaks like you, stand up and say, I'm HIV positive, And if you don't like it, I don't care because, <laughs> because I'm confident and comfortable and strong in my own skin. Yeah. There's nothing more impactful than that. And that's huge because the other part of the challenge and stigma that we face is generational. So I tell a lot of youth that I work with, I love my parents. I do. I love my mom, I love my dad, and I love all human beings. However, the stigma we have today was given to us by generations that came before us. We did not ask for it, and we did not dictate it. And so this film is a chance for us to really create our own narrative as to how we perceive this issue. And if we do it in the way that Thomas and Tyler and our team have executed it, we know one thing that the younger generation will simply leapfrog stigma. Well, and furthermore, we tested it on the ground with our test for ticket program and concert. We had a three week testing uh, 
campaign that test, and we ended up testing 10,802 people. Wow, I was going to ask against. what the impact of that was. Yeah. What's that? I was going to ask you about that, the impact. Did you succeed in getting many people tested and what has been the result of that um, test for tickets? Well, What's the result was fantastic. We, you know, I think maybe like 10 or 11% tested positive and we enrolled them into patient care treatment programs. You see. And they came to the concert. And as Jake said, they saw Thomas on stage. Hey, yeah, I have HIV. Check out this song. Absolutely. Yeah. But Jake, I have to say this though, on, in your journey, I think it's not, isn't it not always about the stigma too, it's the fear. Mm -hmm. It's the fear of our mortality. So sometimes even if it's not the stigma we're worried about, it's about the realization that this thing has been um, portrayed as a death sentence. And who wants to acknowledge and sure. feel like, oh, I'm gonna die and the documentary shows that as well. It's not always that. So how do you go from, because someone will tell me, you, I can talk all I want. If I'm not experiencing that, if I have not experienced it, I cannot relate. So for someone like you to walk someone through from the time you get tested, realizing your HIV positive, how do you deal with that? Because there's a mental toll as well. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's the processing is incredibly important and the, and the fear is, is very real. Yeah. The, there's very little information out there, again, packaged in the right way that allows me, if I'm someone who is finding out for the first time that I'm HIV positive, if I go online and start researching it for myself, there's a lot of fear driven information. <laughs> totally. Right. It's like going on like WebMD and being like, you know, I have a red spot on my arm and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, is it cancerous? <laughs> right? And like, I you know, do that. <laughs> right, right. And then I tell my doctor, oh my God, what's happening? And he's like, don't worry, it's a pimple. Right. You know? so, like, there, there's, there is a very real component to the fear. And, um, you know, and so much of that has to come with a delicate process of how the information is delivered mm -hmm. um, and having a platform like Muchimba Music Foundation, okay. or like the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation, or UN AIDS, or any of the, the big organizations in the world that have ambassadorship and opportunity for those that are discovering this information for the first time to see other people that are living healthy and powerful lives along with HIV. So the, the opportunity is there. The fear, I mean, there, there's some very poignant moments that I've experienced in my work. Uh, um, just a few years ago in Tanzania, we were at a youth camp and um, you know, there's, there's obviously a language barrier. My Swahili isn't as good as I, I'd like it to be, um, you know, but I think that within this realm, language is not a barrier. And I remember standing up in front of a group of kids um, about 16 to 18 years old. And I just stood in front of them and I just pounded my chest. I just sat there and I just went, you know, my name's Jake Glazer. I'm HIV positive and I'm, I'm immovable. I'm strong. I'm powerful. And five minutes, 10 minutes after that, a kid gets up and he shares a story for the first time in his life about losing his parents to AIDS. And he was so emotional about it, but he wouldn't have gotten up there had he not seen someone before him do that? And that's where those, those role models and those idols come into play. So for me, when I was, you know, when I was a kid being HIV positive, there were very few role models out there, but there was one in particular, this guy rolls into my school on a Harley Davidson, all tattooed up on his sleeves and everywhere. And he's HIV positive. And that was that moment where I went, Oh, okay. I can be me. I can do all of this. I can actually live a life that might be a little closer to more meaningful than your, than your average Joe. You know, the thing about the death sentence, I mean, A, we have to change our language. This is a chronic illness. I know. This is not a death sentence. Mm -hmm. There's medication, there's tons of cocktails for this. If there's, there's options, if one thing doesn't work for you, there's another cocktail that can work for you. So we know that it's not a death sentence. And we also have to get out there and we have to let people know that the old narrative is gone. The new narrative is here. And we have to show those examples. I mean, there's, there's literally, I could create a roster. Tyler and I and Thomas could create a roster of HIV positive individuals that match up to like Red Bull's roster. 
thing you better believe it <laughs> right Absolutely. and that's pretty rad that's a really cool cool component and so you know it's this project's edgy and it goes against the grain and it even says in little subtle ways if you're young it's in your blood to rebel but do it in a smart way follow our path because it'll benefit your life in that process so yeah i mean it's it's a lot to 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 overcome and you know 30 years ago when this all started we were all asking ourselves the same question how do we how do we crack the code on communicating to to the world something that they know nothing about and i think we have to treat it the same way and this is a, a great first step in that direction absolutely wonderful tyler the title doing my drugs who came up with that concept because when i, I saw it um, the part with alex and uh, karen sent me the press release about it doing my drugs i was thinking something else i was like what the heck do my drugs <laughs> it's Thomas, it is a song doing my drugs and you know it's meant to be a little tongue-in-cheek it's meant to a double entendre but you know you do need to take your drugs that's what it means yeah. right yeah. Exactly. but uh very and also you know you we, not a lot of people are gonna choose the uh choose the um aids film when they look at the marquee right oh my god we should go see it <laughs> oh. it was a smart move drugs? yes i'm going to see doing my drugs very uh, strategic yeah very incredibly great film so um jake how did you your foundation support this project i'm curious to know and uh, to see how we can get more people on board yeah well we um so at at egg path our family's organization uh psychosocial support peer-to-peer -peer counseling is a very very important piece of, of all of the work that we do like back to what we were just talking about like if you if you can't relate to someone and you can't look at someone and say okay if they can do it i can do it then your chances of succeeding in whatever you're trying diminish drastically um so egg path supported in uh in providing peer-to-peer -peer counseling um, the process of receiving information, the process of uh, also having a comprehensive roadmap to understand where to get your treatment. I think, uh, you know, Tyler, you might be able to speak to the numbers a little better than I can for how many uh, locations within the partnerships, but based on the, on the strategic partnerships that we had in this project, um, we had a, a plethora of locations that we could send these, these amazing individuals to that took this step to be able to get the treatment that they need. Um, and then obviously a joint effort in awareness, uh, social media, um, and any opportunity that we could to help Tyler and, and Thomas drive this, this story forward and give them boots on the ground support in, uh, in Zambia. Okay. So Tyler, what's the ultimate goal for this film? What do you want it to do? Uh, I, I wanted to uh, change the perceptions of Zambians. And ultimately, statistically, we'd like to see the rate of infections go down. Um, I want all the Zambians, you know, first and foremost, I made this film for the Zambians. Okay. It's very important to me that they see the film and that they uh, look up to Thomas and that hopefully he can help things change around there. Yeah. That's a great goal. That's a great goal. Are you working with the government of Zambia, Jake, any of you, the organization, or are you guys working with that government to push this film? Yeah, we're working with the uh, Ministry of Health and uh, other public health officials. We also work with Ag uh, Elizabeth Glazier Pediatric AIDS Foundation. We work with the United Na uh, UN AIDS. Mm -hmm. We work with the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. And as you know, Thomas and I have founded the Machimbo Music Foundation. And our major platform is the Test for Ticket uh, program. We'd like to expand it. You know, we, we show that we can, we, we were able to test almost 11,000 people with one show. What if we did every province in the country? Wow. Could we test 100,000? Wow. Could we do 200,000? The more people that know their status, the, the less, the, the, the way we can stop the spread of this. So yeah, we are working with the government and other agencies and we have a huge coalition as Jake mentioned. So we're hoping that this film will shed more light on it. Who knows, maybe we can get some of the bigger musicians to uh, hop on board too. We know there's some big names out there. Elton John, Bono, you know, there's guys who, what are they going to think when they see this film? What are they going to think of Thomas? Maybe they'll want to sing with him. Who knows? Any of that stuff helps. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm and, hoping 
go ahead, go ahead. The, the change of perspective too, you know, they, as Tyler said, the, the opportunity to continue this project for the test for ticket concerts, we, we can, I mean, obviously we're dealing with a dual pandemic right now and concerts aren't happening. So we're gonna have to get very creative in how we, we you know, further produce these opportunities. Um, but the amazing thing is, is that a, an action and lifestyle can support and deliver the data that can support the science side and the programmatic side of what foundations like ours does. And so if we know the status and we see the result in youth coming into our, our, into our care through our facilities, and we know that the driver of that is supported by these lifestyle driven activations like a test for ticket concert, then it only empowers us to go work with local governments, local production companies, local partners and international to be able to expand this physical action in, in as many ways as we possibly can. And it is necessarily the, the, the new idea on the block. You know, I mean, you look at Global Citizen and, you know, it's a concert in, in New York City where I believe people donate their time you know, and picking up cash and other opportunities to get tickets for. And I think that's all well and good. But here we're exposing the power of what incentive to a younger generation can do when confronting a really heavily stigmatized issue. Yeah. I don't think kids in New York necessarily need to be pushed to a free ticket. We want them to donate their time. We want them to volunteer. But here we are looking at a highly stigmatized community, one that's been passed from generation to generation, and not just because of fear of HIV. I know there's religious roadblocks um, and cultural roadblocks as well. Um, but here we have uh, this proof of concept that says, if we incentivize them with the right opportunity yes. in three weeks, <laughs> we can test 10,800 kids, yes. adolescents, and they all came to the concert. That follow through, that, that action alone, in my opinion, from the work I've done is light years beyond any call to action that we've been able to implement through the nonprofit effort. I don't think I've ever seen 10,800 adolescents get tested and go to a concert and, and gain that awareness in the span of a three week period of time. That's an amazing proof of con concept. I'm hoping though, that maybe eventually you'll duplicate this in other African countries because um, the challenges are just the same, you know, Zambia. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I hope so, really do. So mm -hmm. any last words for our audience? How can they see the film and how can they support this um, project? Well, uh, you can support by watching the film. Mm -hmm. It's also a soundtrack album. Feel free to stream that or purchase a single from Thomas. You know, we have the Muchimba, Muchimba.org, the Muchimba Music Foundation. Mm -hmm. We are, we want to throw more concerts. We have plans in place to throw more concerts and you know, we can't do it without the support of others. So those are a couple of ways you could definitely support. Okay. Yeah. And I think if this, if anybody that sees this is that if this idea resonates, then join us, become a part of the effort to bring it to your local government, to bring it to your local NGOs that are working as a part of this global effort in HIV and AIDS. The best way to advocate for this is word of mouth. We need people to share this information, get out there and just tell everyone about it. And we all need some hope and inspiration and empowerment in the world right now. Sure do. And if there's one thing that I know is that we can learn from what we go through in the past and apply it to what we're going through in the present and into the future. And HIV and AIDS is the greatest pandemic that humanity has ever faced. And now we are knee deep in COVID and we are confronting all sorts of issues that are very parallel from stigma to getting tested, to knowing your status, to making the right decisions, to caring for your family and not putting people at risk. So in a lot of ways, there's a silver lining to we are united in this COVID effort. And it also gives us an opportunity to apply that same thinking and that same opportunity to HIV and AIDS. So let's just, let's get present and let's share this information, watch the film and listen to the music and get hyped on it. Absolutely. And where will they be seeing this film? <laughs> which it depends on the country i mean you get the, the the album is worldwide release on november 30th okay. and then on december 1st world aids day we have 
wide distribution throughout all of North America. You can, uh, there'll be plenty of links. It's okay. on all the major retailers. We have uh, screenings in Denmark. We have performances by Thomas, and then uh, it'll be available in Africa soon. Okay, that's wonderful. Well, I think that uh, you guys are doing great work, and I'm just happy that I had this opportunity to chat with you and uh, Jake share your story and inspire other people, because besides stigma, even here in the United States, the people living in fear. Oh you yeah. Know, there's also a personal stigma that sometimes we carry from our core, like you said, from generations, right? <laughs> from our parents and that great, that has really been a part of us. Totally. So I'm really hoping that everybody realizes that you can, people are dying from the flu. People are dying from, you know, and, and you have HIV, you're living your normal life. You yeah. know, I really hate to say, like you said, living a normal life, you're living your life. You're living your life. You're living your life. And we want everybody to live their lives. Yeah. So, thank you so much, gentlemen. and. Uh, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you for the opportunity. This is a, a great privilege. And yeah. Tyler and I and Thomas are just thrilled that uh, that you're helping us spread awareness, share the story, and you're as, just as excited about it as we are. So thank yeah. you. Thank you. I am. Yeah. yeah. We've been touched and we have to be the voices and amplify the message. It's not a death sentence. Let me go do my drugs, I guess. Everybody do <laughs> your drugs, right? Well, you better yep. the drugs you're doing, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely. completely. Yeah. <laughs> Next interview. Okay. Make Thank good you. choices. Make good choices. That's right. So take care and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you, Pamela. Thanks, you Pamela. as well. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, you too. Bye-bye. We've come to the end of our show. Thank you so very much for joining me today. I would love to hear what you think about our discussion. So please share your thoughts in our comment section or send me an email to publisher at immigrantmagazine.com. Now be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Pam and Chang and like us on Facebook, The Immigrant Magazine. See you next time on The Immigrant Magazine Weekly.